Here's how you can use our Face Relight plugin inside of Cinema 4D. Go ahead and download it and install it. Then go ahead and launch After Effects. This is only available on Windows currently. We are looking into building a Mac version as well. In After Effects, go to Window Extensions and select the Crate's Face Relight. That's going to launch it. Go ahead and log into your Production Crate account and find your video that you want to add your face tracking to. The Output folder is just where you are going to output your OBJ sequence. Make sure to select the C4D sequence file if you're using any 3D software and Element 3D if you are using, well, Element 3D. And all you need to do is select Launch App and that's going to generate your OBJ sequence. If you don't think it's actually doing anything, you can actually open up your Output folder and just watch those OBJ OBJs generate. And for C4D, well, that's pretty much all we need at the moment. Now I can just go ahead and launch Cinema 4D. Now I do want to use our preset template, which you can download. Link is going to be in the description below. This just helps align the animated OBJ face mesh to our footage a lot more quickly. Inside of that template, we see our camera and our camera target. Now we can go to File, Merge Project, and select the first OBJ in our OBJ sequence. Just hit open and make sure your frame rate matches your video frame rate and select PLA animation and then hit OK. And here is our animated face mesh. It's that easy. To see how well this tracks to our footage, we can create a new background. First, I just want to make sure our project frame rate does match our footage frame rate. Make sure your frame rates match across all your software. One thing we can see with this animated mesh is that it looks pretty rough and that's because these polygons are not welded. We just needed to do that to make things work, but just go into your polygon mode, select all your polygons, right click and select optimize and that's going to weld everything and smooth it out. Let's go ahead and create a new background object and I'm going to create a new material, drop that on my background and select my video layer so I can see how well things are lining up. And that's actually pretty close right off the bat. I didn't really need to do anything. I can tweak it a little bit and I find the easiest way to tweak it is to just move the camera target around a little bit. You can see that there is a little shake and that's just how this thing works. It's not terrible, but it's not perfect. It does work pretty good for face relighting, but for what we're doing today, which is adding 3D objects to the face mesh, you are probably going to see a little shake. I wouldn't really suggest using this technique in any film or commercial, but if you're using it for any YouTube video or social media video, uh, I think this actually works pretty nicely. All right, after just moving the camera target around, we could see things are lining up essentially perfectly at this point. I'm just going to add a protection tag to my camera so I don't accidentally move it around. I want to attach a little clown nose to the tip of this guy's nose, so I'm going to jump into polygon mode and select one polygon on the tip of his nose and then I could just add a selection tag using that polygon. Next, let's generate a new MoGraph cloner, and I'm just gonna drop a ball into that cloner. In my cloner, I'm going to go to my object mode and select object, drag and drop my face mesh object, and for selection, I can drag that selection tag. Here, we can just move the distribution to be polygon, and that's just gonna snap our sphere to the nose. Now, you can see some weird polygon jankiness here that's not going to appear in the render it's just because our camera is pretty funky the focal length is extremely long and that's just the way i had to set it up in order to make everything work pretty well no matter what footage you're using but if you know c4d well you could probably come up with your own better technique I also found that the face mesh does work pretty nicely as a shadow catcher. So if you're putting things like clown noses or glasses or horns or whatever onto your tracked features, having a shadow catcher will be nice. Now, of course, this is just tracking the position of that polygon. It's not going to track any scale information. To do that, you're going to need to pull off a couple more tricks. But since the scale of my dude's face doesn't really change all that much, uh, I'm not going to care about it on this tutorial. I hope that gave you some idea of how you can use the face relight inside of Cinema 4D for some janky tracking goodness. That's all for today. Later, creators.